It's time to review Disney's Hercules for the PlayStation. If you've been around my channel for long enough or just decided to look at my earlier videos out of boredom, you may remember that I already looked at this game in a very, and I do mean very, short-lived so, retrospective on Disney you. games for the PlayStation, but I thought I'd look at it again since, one, the original video was unscripted and therefore kind of poo, and two, I'm kind of running out of things to review at the moment, so with that out of the way, let's begin the review. The story of the game is basically the same as that as the 1997 Disney movie it's based on. Our hero, Hercules, is trying to become a hero by saving people and killing monsters sent by Hades in order to become a god again since he's mortal. Yeah, I have no idea how that logic works. Anyway, Hercules is simply a 2D side scroller where the objective is to get from A to B. The X button jumps, you use your sword by pressing square, punch people by pressing circle, and when you hold triangle you can charge up a super punch to destroy obstacles that are in your way, and you can activate that super punch when you hear a dinging noise. Throughout the levels, there are various items you can find. First of all, there are mini Hercules, I don't know how to pronounce that, which can increase your health bar for the rest of the level. There are also levels spelling out the name Hercules when you collect them all. You get yelled up by Hermes. No, the god Hermes. In each level, there are four vases, and if you collect them all, you get the password for the next level and get a chance to save the game. There are also other items you can equip and switch around by pressing R1 and L1 like swords with different abilities such as being able to shoot fire or lightning, as well as a helmet that gives you temporary invisibility. But every few levels, the gameplay changes from side-scrolling to a behind-the-back 3D level, kind of like the special stages from Michael's Chaotix. And sadly, this is where most of the game's annoyances come from. Now, let me clarify that the stages aren't actually terrible. But the problem is that, especially on the Cyclops stage, you will keep bumping into everyone and everything since the developer decided you shall get hurt by bumping into, again, anything. Another issue is that you can't use the DualShock analog sticks, so you have to use the D-pad to move around and control your speed. It's not so bad during the 2D stages, but when trying to control your speed and dodging obstacles, your fingers will more than likely die. Another issue is that the game is too short and if you play the game on easy, for some reason it'll end early before the last couple of levels. However, thankfully you can get past that with passwords. And for the sake of calling back to a brief rant in the retrospective, can someone please explain to me what the hell is up with the big olive level? I mean, there is so much madness in that level, and yet, somehow, through some incredibly odd circumstances, it's still standing. Do you want to know its problems? Let's recount them yet again. Cats get struck by lightning and leave behind trails of fire when they run like hell. Men in stow bins run into people and hurt them. Fat women are chased by clouds of rain and lightning. People are easily killed by the traffic since the traffic is completely blind. There are people who stab people everywhere. A giant minotaur is throwing rocks at people. Buildings are collapsing at the seams. Blackbirds are kidnapping people for no reason. There is a rising of the undead and a gigantic multi-headed demon resides just outside of the city. What? Look, I know this is just a game, but how much madness can you have and yet still stand? Could you excuse me a minute? I have to listen to some good music. Okay, after that, now we can do what I always do at this point and talk about the good bits of the game, and by god there are a lot of them. First of all, the graphics are really good and unbelievably impressive. The graphics are done with 3D backgrounds, environments, and objects, while the characters and enemies are all 2D, which gives a nice blend of the two different dimensions and has a lot of detail in it, making one of the most satisfying bits of the game even better. Probably the best example of the graphics would be the Hydra, which looks utterly fantastic for its time. 
Keep in mind that this came out in 1997, and 3D characters didn't have such high polygon counts, so the frame rate wouldn't die, but since the game is in 2D, the developers can afford to make the boss look even better, and this is what we get. And speaking of bosses, the boss battles are actually pretty good with some interesting tactics on how to beat them. And okay, I did bash the running stages for bumping into everything and breaking your fingers, but they are actually pretty awesome, and heck, even a bit epic. You, although that may have something to do with the music, which is also pretty good and actually gives us instrumental versions of songs from the movie. There's also a lot of variety in the game. One level will be 2D platforming, the next will be a boss battle, and the one after that could be an odd tribute to Unreal's 2D shooters like R-Type. But I think we can all agree that the greatest thing about the game is that, is, a, is that it has a music video of Zero to Hero. Hell yes! Disney's Hercules is a really good game with amazing graphics, fun bosses, pretty good music, a lot of variety, awesome running stages, and Zero to Hero, baby! But unfortunately, the game's a bit too short, your fingers will be destroyed in the running stages, and you keep bumping into everything. Despite this, I give Disney's Hercules a Saints Row. Meaning that, although it's held back by a few problems, it's still a great game. 